gateway to Oz Under the rainbow, this is where it was Hollyhocks and red ripe tomatoes And churned homemade ice cream Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes It's the best part of Dorothy's dream Today Around Kansas starts with a story about the fossils of Kansas found today in museums across the state, including ones in Fort Wallace, Minneapolis, Oakley, and Hayes. Next, learn details about the 2016 Kansas Music Hall of Fame inductees. Then enjoy a poem from Ron Wilson, and we'll end with Michael Dante, an award-winning actor of television, films, and stage. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment is brought to you by Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. Just a short drive down the Yellow Brick Road. Well, good morning. Good morning. I'm Frank. I'm Deb. And this is Around Kansas. And so, aren't Frank, they aren't, aren't they bringing breakfast in? Or? Exactly. We're waiting for the caterer to show up. <laughs> yeah. So they're setting up obviously for an event here at the Dillon House. So we thought we'd take advantage of that. And I like having a table. This yes. is like the Today yeah. Show or something. It you is know, nice. Where, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We we should get our own table with our own logo and and breakfast. Yeah, and breakfast and coffee. <laughs> yeah, that Wouldn't would that be great. Be nice? yeah. That would be nice. Okay. Anyway, here we are. In what month are we in now? February? February? Good grief already. <laughs> okay. So. Yeah. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Yeah. And by the way, yeah, it, it, this isn't set up the way it would be here at the Dillon House. They really do a fantastic okay. job uh, when you have a meeting or a reception or something here. So anyway, we hope that you'll take advantage of it sometime. It's, it's going to be real pretty when they get it all <laughs> real laid pretty. out. Real pretty. Yes, it will. Uh, okay. So what have you been up to? Oh, just all over the place. Uh, <laughs> Heather and I were out in Oberlin um, a few weeks ago. Love, love going to Oberlin always. Um, we've done some segments on Oberlin and, and we'll do more. But I just got to say this. We were working on a video. We we're actually doing a video for the town of Oberlin. And so we were going around town getting just pictures of people doing normal stuff. They were having a blood drive while we were there. It was packed. Huh. It was absolutely packed. And people kept coming in while we were there. The sense of community really is remarkable. I mean, we, we visit a lot of wonderful communities, but Oberlin has got to be just on the top of every good list you can think of. Mm. Uh, just an amazing group of folks out there. Yeah. So we always love going. <laughs> so what you been up to? Oh, well, you know, Ren Radio keeps cooking along and all of that, and we're getting ready for spring. NHRA, of course, is coming back this year, and we're a partner station with them. Oh, so fun. you're going to be hearing a lot about uh, what NHRA is going to be doing here and all over the country. And also, you know, we have a baseball team in Topeka as well. I the, am so excited Yeah, about the that. Topeka Train Robbers, and so uh, we'll be telling you a lot more about them, too, as, as uh, uh, they get underway. That that. That's an incredible league. It's called the Pecos League. And uh, so it's been kind of fun. I talked to uh, one of the head guys in, in the league who's in New Mexico. And we were talking about Ren Radio. And uh, we'd like to cover the league for him and all that. And I said, uh, you might tune us in and listen. And he said, well, I'm not in Topeka. I'm in New Mexico. I said, we're on the Internet. And he went, Oh, okay, that's right. So anyway, it's kind of fun. That's awesome. I, I can't wait. I, I love baseball. Yeah. And baseball players are always the best looking, too. <laughs> so All through the ages. That's, that's fact. Oh, okay. That's fact. So what are we going to talk about today? What well, are we we're going to talk about some fossils around Kansas, Kansas Music Hall of Fame, of course, coming up, and then um, an interview I did in Dodge City huh. a few months ago. Okay. And I'm going to share it with you all. All right. So we'll be back. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. 
Lecompton. The name was splashed across newspapers throughout America and Europe. It was debated in the halls of Congress. Lecompton interprets its unique territorial history with two museums and other sites. Events throughout the year celebrate history and community. Make plans to attend the 20th annual Bleeding Kansas Lecture Series at Constitution Hall each Sunday at 2 p.m. from January 31st to March 6th. Donations welcomed. Spend the day in historic Lecompton shopping, eating, savoring the rich history. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine. Your stem cells, your health, your life. And we're back. So I was in Philadelphia, as you know, over New Year's. Mm -hmm. And while I was there, I went to the Academy of Natural Sciences on Logan Circle. And this is, this is their little brochure, so you got to go if you're ever in Philadelphia. I went to see the um, fossilized remains of an Elasmosaurus that was actually dug up out near Fort Wallace in the 1860s. Uh, right in the middle of the Indian Wars, and we're going to do some more stories on that because it's a phenomenal, just a phenomenal story. But while the um, personnel there at the museum were showing me through their collections, they're looking for all the stuff from Kansas. So you've got these fossilized remains of these mostly sea beast, you know, from when we were an inland sea. Oh, yeah. We were, we were the great inland sea. We were. And, it's you know, they, they do study that in school now. Because uh, I know uh, one of my granddaughters said, Grandpa, do you know about the Great Inland Sea? And I said, hey, it's a fun thing. And we looked it up and all of that. And it's really an amazing story. Yeah. So as they're pulling out these drawers in this incredible facility in Philadelphia, there are all these little fossilized, you know, they're vertebrae. They're just all kinds of things. And their names, you know, Theophilus Turner is the man who found the one out near Fort Wallace. But you've got Sternberg you know, a name that everybody in Kansas and, and anybody in anthro um, anthropology knows um, from the Sternberg Museum, of course. But you've got Sternberg's name and <laughs> on these things. So I got to thinking about all the places around Kansas that have boasted fossils. And we've got some incredible <laughs> locations here in Kansas that you can go visit and some tremendous stories of people that found things and how they found them and so there's just there's stories all over the place yeah yeah well and the thing is especially with a lot of sandstone and all of that because i know uh, i've got a pond in my mm -hmm. yard and all that and as i was collecting rocks i'd come upon a rock and there would be like a seashell and it's like huh that's cool so this has been around for some time exactly it's just it's just an amazing um, part of our um, history and geography, and and it's so accessible. Like I said, there are just locations all over the state that you can go and learn more, and some of these you may be familiar with, and some you may not be that familiar with. So we want to share some of those with you today. According to the Kansas Geological Survey, Kansas rocks are full of fossils. Fossils are the signs of ancient plants and animals. They come in many forms from bones and shells to carbon traces, tracks, and burrows. For fossilization to occur, an organism must be buried fairly quickly to protect it from being eaten by scavengers, attacked by bacteria, or worn away by wind or wave action. Occasionally, mudslides and volcanic eruptions quickly bury organisms on land, but rapid burial is more likely to occur in water. Based on marine fossils contained in many of the rocks that crop out at the surface in Kansas, scientists know that shallow seas covered the area for long intervals throughout the past. These seas were ideal for rapid burial. Rivers, lakes, ponds, and streams also made good burial sites. Many significant fossils have been discovered in Kansas, and many sites throughout the state have them on display. One of the most significant was near Sheridan, Kansas, when the post-surgeon from Fort Wallace, 
Theophilus Turner uncovered a pleosaur nearly 42 feet long. A replica of the fossil is now displayed in the Fort Wallace Museum. Another interesting exhibit is in Minneapolis at the Ottawa County Museum. The Silvasaurus chondrii was found by rancher Warren Condray in the 1950s. Senator Frank Carlson connected Condray with folks at KU, and the beast he discovered was named for him and is the only one of its type discovered to this point. The museum displays many rocks and fossils other than Silvasaurus, including a dinosaur egg from China. The Fick Fossil and History Museum in Oakley began with the collections of Ernest and Vi Fick. When the thousands of sharks' teeth and other finds outgrew their home, the museum was established to share these artifacts with the public. Of course, the Sternberg Museum in Hayes, Kansas, is famous for his Fish Within a Fish fossil discovered by George Sternberg. Other fossils include huge marine reptiles, toothed birds, giant clams, flying reptiles, sharks, and bizarre fishes. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. Around Kansas, brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook, or visit us online at sftmeats.com. Welcome back, folks. And what Frank and I love, I think, most about doing this show is sharing the people and places and events that we love the most. And so in talking about the Kansas Music Hall of Fame that's coming up in March, we were talking about Bill Lee, mm -hmm. who passed away recently. So I think it's just fitting and proper to talk about your relationship with Bill Lee. <laughs> well, uh, I worked at KLWN and, and uh, 106, the music station, which became uh, the Laser KLZR. And uh, Bill was the program director of the AM station KLWN while I was there. And uh, Bill was a talented, talented guy. And he had a great uh, knowledge of music. Uh, and obviously, when uh, in his later years, when he retired, uh, he had the idea of having a Kansas Music Hall of Fame. I mean, after all, look at all the stories we've done about uh, the musicians uh, from the state of Kansas, like Kansas. And I mean, there, there are tons of them. Tons of them. And uh, especially in the 50s, there were a lot of, of small bands that traveled around. And of course, radio station KOMA, which was a 50,000 watt station, uh, promoted a lot of these bands. And so Bill said, you know, we, we need to have a Hall of Fame here to uh, uh, let people know about, you know, a rich history that Kansas has in, in the music industry. And it's not just in rock, it's, it's in a lot of oh, different venues. And in all, in all genres of music, and it's just ongoing, and um, Bill brought a bunch of like-minded folks together to create the Kansas Music Hall of Fame. And the wonderful thing, um, you know, I was at Bill's memorial service at Liberty Hall, and when all his children um, took to the stage to talk about his life and career, and they shared memories, um, musical memories, that Bill had created for them, taking them to concerts or being at the radio station with him or, or meeting people that uh, were in the music business. And, and it was wonderful to hear them share those stories. And the wonderful thing is Bill created something that lives past him yeah. and is still going on and is going to go on for a long time because we're still producing a lot of talented <laughs> folks in Kansas. And, Absolutely. And we are going to keep that tradition going for sure. 
Let's take a look. The election is over, the votes have been cast, the board has met, and the results are in. The 2016 Kansas Music Hall of Fame inductees and performers at the induction ceremony are Billy Bob and the Bel Airs Beloit, Sawdust Charlie, Wichita, Mark Selby and the Sluggers, Salina, South of the Tracks, Manhattan, Thumbs, Lawrence, Charlie and the Stingrays, Kansas City. Completing this year's inductees are King Alex and the Untouchables, Kansas City, Marva Whitney, Kansas City, Roger Walls, Rose Hill, the Fabulous Apostles, Wichita, and the Director's Awards go to Dick and Jay, KY102, Kansas City, and Wayne Rouse, Manhattan. The Bob Hapgood Award goes to Orrin Friesen of Benton. The Kansas Music Hall of Fame was established in 2004 to recognize and honor performers and others who have made significant contributions to the musical history of the state of Kansas and the greater Kansas City metropolitan area. The Hall of Fame will endeavor to promote public interest in the musicians of the past and encourage those of the present and future. Inductions will be held March 5th at Liberty Hall, Lawrence, and tickets are available from their box office. On Friday night, March 4th, a jam with inductees is held at the Holiday Inn in Lawrence, which also offers room discounts to those attending the event. Kansas Music Hall of Fame Alan Blasco invites you to foster the talent and dedication of these performers while enjoying a night of unsurpassed entertainment. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. This segment brought to you by Kansas Grain Sorghum, growers working together. Find out more at kansasgrainsorghum.org. Farming is a gamble. A farmer puts a crop into the ground, a rancher raises a calf, not knowing what kind of weather conditions, market conditions, or other factors could affect it in the end. So farming is a gamble, just like Las Vegas. This is a poem I wrote titled, Gambling Man. Did you hear about the guy who went on an amazing trip and hit it rich, winning money at an amazing clip? I hear stories of those high-rolling, gambling bigwigs who roll the dice in Vegas and really hit it big. But I'm way too conservative, or risk-averse, they say, to take a chance on losing all my money in this way. Yeah, maybe the biggest gamblers aren't in Vegas after all, but rather in the country at agriculture's call. That's where a farmer takes the gamble to plant a crop of wheat never knowing if it will survive the drought or freeze or heat. And just as Lady Luck can snatch a gambler's money when they win it, a hailstorm in can claim a Kansas wheat crop in a minute. A mother cow takes a year to breed and feed and thrive, but that whole year income's lost if the baby calf does not survive. The market shows the farmer the value of his crops, but it's a gamble to sell before the market drops. So maybe the biggest gamblers aren't the ones with Vegas claims, but rather the farmers and ranchers out here on the Kansas Plains. I think I'll take the risks I know with crops and with cattle, instead of trying to beat casino odds in some Las Vegas battle. Did you hear about my friend whose Vegas trip caused such a fuss? He drove there in a $20,000 car and came back in a $100,000 bus. Happy trails. I'm a patient of the Kansas Regenerative Medicine in Manhattan. I had uh, stem cell therapy in my hips and my left knee. My wife and I, uh, both are patients. We went down there the same day in November. Since then, uh, my hips are feeling a lot better. I can, can work now most of the day if I want to. And uh, before, if I, if I worked in the morning, I was done in the afternoon. Or if I worked in the afternoon, um, I was sure enough done for the rest of the day. Tallgrass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tallgrass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. 
Around Kansas, brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. Go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back, folks. I want to share today a piece of an interview that I did um, a few months ago at the Wild West Fest out in Dodge City when I got to meet and interview Michael Dante. And you may not recognize his name. Some of you will, but you will all recognize his face if you're a fan of old TV and Westerns. He even guest starred in Guest Smart. And what was so cool is I had seen an episode, a rerun of Bonanza, the week before I interviewed him. And then I'm sitting there talking to him. And so we're going to talk a little bit about his, uh, his life and career. First generation Italian American professional baseball player. Yeah. So we started talking about his baseball career. Frank, <laughs> you're going to love this. He played for the Washington Senators. And what became of the Washington Senators? <laughs> well, they kind of went away. Now, I mean, they, there's another baseball team in, in D.C. now, but I can't even think of their name. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, who is it? But yeah. the Senators, yeah, they, they had a lot of good players. They had some tremendous players. So he and I started visiting then about Yogi Berra because Heather <laughs> and I happened to be in St. Louis the day Yogi Berra died, eating dinner in the neighborhood, um, the, the hill, where Yogi Berra and Joe Garagiola and those guys grew up. So we went by his house. I, I got out and spoke to his niece and expressed our condolences. So Michael Dante knew Yogi Berra very well <laughs> and DiMaggio. And it was like all those Italian players had their own little clique or club or support group or whatever you want to call yeah. it. You know, they were all very close friends and supporters of one another. And they, um, I think uh, Yogi was living in New Jersey, I think, when he passed away. So Michael talked about, you know, visiting Yogi's home in New Jersey <laughs> and how they would all get together. It was just an amazing connection, yeah. just amazing. I'll share a book with you that I've got. It's called Yogiisms. Oh, my gosh. And you know, it, it is an entire book, of course, of what yeah, of course, the most famous one is it ain't over till it's over. But he nobody had a, goes there anymore. He had it's too lot. crowded. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, nobody goes there anymore because it's too crowded. And so it's too bad Yogi's not from Kansas. We could we could do a year on the guy. But you know, I uh, my friend Shelby Smith used to be lieutenant governor of Kansas. Um, knew Yogi. Uh, they played baseball against each other. Um, when Shelby grew up in St. Joe, even though his career was made in Kansas, he grew up in St. Joe. So they played the state championship against each other. Uh, Garagiola and Barrow were on the same <laughs> team. And, of course, their team won, you know, as Shelby points out. But anyway, back to Michael's yes. career. And um, hopefully we're going to get to share more of him as time goes on because he was an amazing man. And you're going to love getting to know him better. Well, when I went to Warner Brothers, that's where I really learned my craft. I, I started, I did Cheyenne, I did about three Cheyennes, Colt 45, a Sugarfoot, uh, Maverick, and I went from one Western to another, and I, I was a good type. See, the, since I wasn't in the series, and I didn't want to do a series at the time, I was very uh, cautious and afraid that, because if you did a series and it wasn't successful, you had a rough time working. So, but at Warner Brothers, I went from one show to another, and that gave me the, the versatility to play the good guy and the bad guy. So very few actors that had my physical attributes could play the good guy and the bad guy, usually with, uh, with my good looks and my stature and presence. I would play the, uh, the, the good guy, but I also had the strength and the power and the passion to play the bad guy. So that kept me alive. And when I was freelancing and left Warner, Warner Brothers, I was able to play the heavies and guest star in the other shows because you couldn't play the hero. The uh, hero was the star of the series. So if you couldn't, if you could be convincing as a uh, uh, villain, you'd starve to death. So I was able to play the villain and, and play it well and a lot of them were Westerns, and I really loved and enjoyed playing the Westerns because I always wanted to be a cowboy. <laughs> and I wanted to share the, the people that I shared my life with, that not only that I get to know, but I got to work with. I had the privilege of working with all of these stars, and all of these bigger-than-life people are in the book. 
and not only pictures, I have, uh, it's 306 pages, about 100 pictures, but I have pictures with, and you know, pictures of, of these stars alone uh, that I, uh, I work with, and some action scenes uh, in, in the in the uh, in the book, and uh, it just one anecdote, uh, you know, after after another uh, that I experience with these pictures. And I look back, and I after I finished it, I said, "Wow, my dad! I'm first generation. My I was dad, ask, yeah. my dad came from Italy. He didn't know the language, and he, he assimilated." and uh, was a businessman, free enterprise, and all of his brothers were in business. He had uh, six brothers and uh, one sister. And uh, the six brothers, they were all in business for themselves, and uh, dad spoke English as good as we did. And, he, and the emphasis was on the education and uh, how, what, all the opportunities you have in America, son, and we support you, we love you, and we're behind. Didn't have, we didn't have any, the money that we were behind you, we could do this and that, but we love and, and adore you and give you all our support, whatever uh, the truth. I bought my family our first automobile, a four-door Buick for $2,500, loaded. You got brand new four-door Buick, radio heater, white wall tires, because my dad was in the produce business. So when we traveled, we traveled on the truck, and we were seven people. So we all couldn't fit, fit in the front cab, so the boys had to get in the back, and, and they managed with, with, with three or four up front. But I was so thrilled when I was able uh, to buy our automob the automobile for my family. And that was such a thrill. And it, you gotta have the right attitude and approach because the opportunities there and the young people, if you don't take care of the, uh, you don't uh, take advantage of the opportunities that America are the greatest country in the world, you don't take advantage of shame on you. I took it, advantage of them, I worked hard and I was blessed with so much, so much rewards. And I'm so, I can't tell you how grateful I am to be an American. Uh, so they still haven't brought breakfast in, so I guess we're going to have to go get it. I guess so. Heck, it's brunch time now. We can eat a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm Frank. I'm Deb. And we'll see you somewhere around, around Kansas. Kansas. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. We're the best part of Dorothy's dream.